Well, as you can see, uh, spring isn't quite here yet. We got snow on the ground. Friday afternoon, I was working on the planter and the Alari cart. Uh, just in a long sleeve shirt, with shop door open, working on the pad in front of the shop. And uh, by the end of Saturday night, it was almost like a snowstorm and then kind of snowed all day yesterday. So happy April Fool's Day, April 1st. Welcome to Ontario. Well, um, I'm not sure how many people know, or I think probably most people know, but there's a GPS, uh, rollover that's happening I think April 9th or something like that they're rolling some weeks back and I guess it's going from like week a thousand something to week zero again and I'm not sure what it has to do with but uh, I think a lot of these GPS receivers need updated I know uh, we run egg leader stuff uh, and uh, if we don't update uh, before the rollover we could lose well we don't lose the unlocks but some of the unlocks that are in for our TK and third-party steering um, kind of disappear and then you have to re-put them in which is not a big deal but I think to save the hassle of having to do that um, I'm just trying to get a whole bunch of receivers updated uh, I gotta pull a module or steer steering module out of the combine uh, and get it set up in our loader tractor for spring so i figured might as well do that uh, quick this morning and do the update on it uh, get it in the tractor and installed and do the update on the gps for the rollover and get that monitor all up to date uh, kind of while we got snow on the ground again it's funny here uh, we can get something like this and like four or five days later if you have the right weather you wouldn't even know we had snow so uh, just gonna get some of that stuff done as I said just waiting on planter parts so uh, I figured to kind of get these little housekeeping items done before uh, spring hits kind of another thing that uh, I'm up to with this kind of weather uh, is just finalizing all the details around the crop plants uh, I pretty much already have figured out what varieties and hybrids go on which farms. Uh, the only thing that we're kind of left up in the air right now is we have 100 acres of wheat that we're not sure what the quality of it's going to be like because of uh, late planting and just a really not ideal fall for it. So once this snow disappears, uh, we kind of get uh, dry ground again. We'll take a look at that 100 acres of wheat to see uh, if it's worth keeping uh, and it will most likely go to soybeans because uh, I really do want to get wheat on that farm uh, so that is kind of uh, the only thing that we are unsure of as at this point I just kind of finalized my herbicide program that I'm gonna run or my chemical programs on all the crops uh, the only one I'm still a little not 100% sure on yet is my edible bean acres but soybean and corn and wheat kind of all been figured out and then uh, just the fertilizer blend for the starter on corn is the only thing that's kind of uh, left yet too which uh, um, I was trying to push that higher rate of nitrogen 60 pounds the acre in the van with 20 of P and 20 of K I think I'm gonna back it off down to 40 pounds uh, just to, to make it a little safer and uh, we'll see how that goes so I can figure that out um, and then uh, just start kind of getting the seed corn in and soybean seed uh, in so all that stuff's around and uh, we're ready to go um, from a starter or from a 28 standpoint for wheat I'm hoping we can get at that here as soon as we can I'm thinking it'll probably be a couple weeks but uh, what I usually do is a pre-blend a whole bunch of 28 and uh, uh, ATS 
ammonia thiosulfate, I think is what it's called. Um, kind of pre-mix it in the tank. I got an empty poly tank. And then that way uh, it's really easy to just hook up the hoses and pump and pump the mixture in and go from there. So kind of a whole bunch of little jobs. Looks like we're gonna be uh, shipping some soybeans uh, this week too, some IP beans. Uh, so we got that to do. Got some corn to ship this month too. And hopefully we start the electrical on the uh, new grain elevator and dryer system uh, that got installed. I got a whole bunch of footage for that. Um, kind of the construction part and kind of a walk around which I'll probably put together and, and put it on the channel but I'm just pulling into the farm here where we keep some of our equipment and gonna rip out that module from the combine and go from there. So this is where I hide all my uh, some of my other equipment. I kind of do a switcheroo here every year where this time of year as we get close to spring or kind of uh, planting season we'll move all the spring stuff home and bring the fall stuff here so we got the buggy and combine here I gotta get the roller and the cultivator home yet do a little bit of work on them before spring starts but I'm just gonna hop up in the combine and grab that module Just getting in the loader tractor here to install this uh, module here basically. Well, it's got to go down here so it's kind of fixed and doesn't get bounced around too much. And then I got to put the antenna on the roof and then I uh, can power up the tractor and then update the display and update that module. and also check to make sure that we can connect to the base station so that all that stuff works. What you saw there was basically just kind of doing the update process on both the monitor uh, update and also the update on the module for the steering there. Uh, it took a while, uh, but it usually does with a, an older display. The newer displays, things update a lot quicker, but uh, just because of uh, older technology, I think, on these displays, it's just slower to communicate. So I'm just gonna show you a quick um, what uh, it looks like with GPS uh, and I'm just going to run down our RTK base station and how we do that stuff a second. We do cellular base correction for GPS. First of all uh, our RTK base station antenna is way up there. It's really not way up there. Um, it's kind of on the end of the uh, corner of the shed there. And that's where we figured we could put it and still have uh, good access to the uh, sky and it's clear and there's no uh, things that are blocking the signal. Um, so I got the tractor running out there and uh, I'm just gonna show you the, the program we use here. So uh, it's a N-trip caster. So the program acts like a caster and a server. So what I mean by that is that uh, it can basically cast the information out to different clients and clients would be the tractor uh, that are accessing the base station for the GPS correction. So you can see right here that loader tractor is connected. It's showing uh, the correction being sent out to the, the display. So. Um, that's what the caster part is I believe and then the server here is basically taking uh, the GPS information via a serial port cable uh, through the USB on the computer uh, from the antenna up on the roof there 
and it's here you can see that it's providing information to the caster to put that information out to the the tractors so it's kind of complicated but not really so basically it takes the information from the base station makes it usable for the tractors and does that through a username and password and uh, kind of an access through a mount point so um, basically in the heat of the battle in the spring or fall uh, we can have a number of users on here because I provide that service out to some of my neighbors who I sold some equipment to um, over the years so uh, that kind of is where our base station is. When I talk about correction uh, there's we have two types of antennas the one that's on the loader tractor uh, you can't really see it and you can't really see the one on the this tractor but the antenna and the housing around the antenna um, called the relay is basically a cell phone modem and uh, it takes a sim card so we plug a sim card a cellular sim card in uh, the antenna up there uh, it takes the GPS and also logs on to the cellular network and uh, acts like a cell phone and goes online to get this information so that's what it's doing right now so we have two of those systems our third system uh, with egg leader is a paradigm and they're a little older and they don't have that as easy it doesn't have the same functionality in it um, if I want to use a modem in the paradigm I have to buy the access through egg leader and I didn't want to do that anymore so what we did was use a cell phone uh, and I'll show you on mine and we use an app on the cell phone uh, that uh, lets us connect to uh, the base station just like these other 6500 antennas and relays. So, so there's the app on my phone here. It's called uh, NTRIP Client. If I actually hit connect, uh, you can see there the yellow bar going up. It's now connected to the base station as you can see there we have two clients on there running so uh, for the paradigm uh, antenna this is what we use a cell phone and then what the cell phone does is through Bluetooth it uh, sends a correction uh, to this Bluetooth adapter and what this Bluetooth adapter is is basically it takes the wireless signal from the cell phone via Bluetooth to this and then it converts it back into a wired signal and it plugs into the wiring harness on the GPS uh, monitor and the display and basically takes that correction and, and gives us RTK. So, uh, so our paradigm system uses a Bluetooth connector like this and the cell phone with the app and my two other tractors use the 6500 uh, relay built into it. Uh, our sprayer actually uses a complete Trimble system. It uses a modem as well. Uh, so it does a SIM card, um, but it's all kind of Trimble case stuff. Uh, I don't know a lot about it, just because I don't usually run that kind of stuff. But uh, that's kind of what we've done. And uh, the base station's worked well. Sometimes the system will crash, the computer will crash. Uh, but what I do with it is that uh, I use Team Viewer, and then I can log on through my phone uh, onto the computer, assuming it's not an internet problem, and I can redo it. But uh, one of the more critical pieces to this whole process was to have really good internet. And uh, as you can see here, we have a modem that comes in from our house. Uh, it basically takes it from the house through the phone line and out to here again. And then we actually have wireless internet out here in the shop. Uh, we got so used to GPS now and auto steer that we can't be without it so figured we better get everything updated and done before this rollover happens. So, so far everything's working out pretty good.